Welcome to another He Said, She Said. This is Ronald Johnson. I'm here with Denise. So your first time tuning in. My name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And more importantly, I believe in always continuing educating yourself because the more knowledge, the more power. So with that being said, what I do is I help people create better better than life. Let's say you want to have a better relationship. You want to have a better career. You want to just do things you've never done. Well, first, you can do all these wonderful things. It starts with you. It starts with the inside. So that's what I'm here to do, help co-create your life and what you're going to live for the rest of your life. So Denise, take it away. And thanks, Ron. And I'm Denise Lewis, and I have a company called GrandSlamCoaching.com because I want every day to be a Grand Slam day. I am a performance coach, both on and off the athletic field. So if you are in the boardroom, the courtroom, or the classroom, I can help you have every day be a Grand Slam day and always turn in your best performance. And I am here with my Coke and a smile on this wonderful morning with Ron. And away we go. Here we go. And today's topic, topic number nine, is all about sweetness. And light, we're at number nine. Ooh, which way do I want to go? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm pretty excited about it because I've been looking at the stuff all week at work and it's been on my mind. So, Ron, I'm going to ask you, it's almost Easter time. What is your favorite Easter candy and why? First thing comes to mind is Cadbury's, got me the lion and the bunny. Mm -hmm. So I like a little stuff inside, but I like the more of the cream. I don't like uh, uh, like the cherries, do all kinds of stuff in the inside. You get the big bunny, has a crunch. But I think the, the cat there, but I think, hold on. Halloween to me has more candy than you do. Okay, well now, okay, now you're bringing in Halloween. And it's really interesting that you bring in Halloween because Halloween and Easter are the only two holidays where the focus is candy. Mm -hmm. The focus is family is optional and the focus is absolutely no gifts and having a whole lot of fun while you're mm. gathering all this candy. Think about it. It's all about gathering candy, be it trick-or-treating or Easter egg hunting. So I'm really glad you brought that up. So tell me what is the difference for you between Easter candy and Halloween candy? Oh, right. I mean, think about, I'm thinking about Reese's Pieces. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm thinking about the crunch. I'm thinking about the Milky Way. I'm thinking about the Snickers. Because most time you go to Halloween, you go to a bunch of different houses, right? Right. You always know what house gives good candy. They give you mm -hmm. full size bars versus these little bite size. Because me, when it comes to stuff, I'm not into one, two. I mean, how, how, how? Get them all in my mouth. Let me have a mouthful of candy. But you know what house to go to. The Tootsie Rolls are by far the worst. They're always a hard nowadays. They're not as true as they used to be. And they're eaty beatsy. So Reese's, Snickers, I like the crunch. I like the nuts inside. Crunch, Captain Crunch. Crunch Bar would be the best one. That's what I'm looking mm -hmm. for. Uh, but make sure it's full size. That, that's what I really like, the full, bigger size candy. And with that being said, when you get your Halloween candy, first you dump it out. You're like, OK, cool. Which ones do I want to eat now? Which ones I want to eat later, and which ones I'm going to save for a rainy day or giveaway, right? So you, you right. sit down like three piles. You say, okay, this one is giveaway. This one I'm going to keep myself for later because it's my best candy, and this one we have now. And usually what happens, say if you have a kid, they select three to five pieces for that night they can have. They don't have the whole bag. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm laughing because back in my day, so if you didn't have any Halloween, because now you get all fancy with these bags and lanterns. Dude, you just got a pillowcase. Yep. Then my <laughs> white pillowcase, put by them, put it over your back like a sack, and yep. you don't go out there and get some candy. You don't fill that sucker up. Yep. No, I agree. And it was actually funny is in my house, because I'm the youngest of four. And when we bought our back to school shoes in August, and there was a long time we were in private school, and the shoes we bought had to fit a certain, you know, criteria with school, but we always went for the brands, my siblings and I, that had the biggest shoe boxes. Interesting. Okay. Because the rule in my house was on Halloween night, you dump it out, you sort it out, we trade, we swap, we do whatever, but we could only keep the amount of candy that we could fit in the shoe box. So the That's an interesting box, dynamic. 
the more candy we got to keep. And of course, mom and dad then said, oh, we'll get rid of this other candy for you. I swear they hid it in their closet and snuck it. That was just their way of getting their share. Not a problem. So then we would have the shoebox. We'd carefully fill it up and line it up and do all this other stuff. Then came the unspoken contest as to who could keep the candy around the longest. Oh. And we always stored our shoe boxes in the freezer. <laughs> what? Really? Okay. We always kept them in the freezer. And I swear to God, my brother and I, it would always come down to the two of us. Who had the most candy left at Easter time? Okay. So you go from October, dump, dump mm -hmm. in that box. Yeah. Put it in the freezer. Would you have yep. a freezer like a home fridge or one of those deep freezers you put in the garage? Oh, it's just the regular stand up side by side. Okay. So you keep that, is that six months? But that math right? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, and was, say November 1, November, December, January, February, March. So between five and six months, depending on where Easter fell. Yeah. Wow. And, on and Easter, what was the prize? Well, the prize was um, actually not for us. <laughs> Mom and dad would take the chocolate again. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> And there was also just a pride about there was a pride about having abstinence and not eating all of your Halloween chocolate before Easter. So it always came down to my brother and I, but I think he snuck a few of my bars to so he would have more chocolate in the end. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember. But it was always, you know, my two sisters, they failed. They 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 were out by Christmas, you know. So it boiled down who had bragging rights for the rest of the year then. Precisely. It was all okay. about bragging rights. But then what was really interesting was that for Easter, this is long before you could sort the jelly beans. The jelly beans always had the black and the colors in them, right? My dad loved the black. All the rest of us did not like the black licorice at all. So we would have to open it up and sort it in the bowls so that dad always got the black and we would spread the rest amongst our Easter baskets. Otherwise dad would just, because we discovered when we were kids, Normally you just go pour in whoosh, and you're done. Well, dad would go diving for the black ones, but of course dad would have to sample every color because it was his job to taste test and, you know, make sure that all was right with the world. Um, and then as and we divvy got it up, right? For each kid. Exactly. Well, then we got smart and we would divide, take out dad's black licorice ones. And then they started selling them with and without black licorice and black licorice by themselves. So that was all fine and cool. But then when we were about... I want to say we we're in high school we kind of just didn't even want the candy anymore and the peeps always disappeared we discovered down our mother's throat <laughs> for easter right for easter they would be in the baskets and they'd be there and really good and then i'm like who had the peeps and mom would be like i don't know i don't know so mom we discovered mom was eating the peeps so then we all just said you know what we just like cheese so then we started gifting each other cheese baskets and everybody was happy so, yeah. You know what? It's funny you bring up this. So <clears throat> the reality is I can't really relate to either one. Yeah. I relate to Halloween because in Halloween, the same place Halloween fell on a Monday or Tuesday over the weekend, all the kids come to school with the Halloween candy. Then obviously throughout the day, people know, usually lights, what goes dark about 5, 5.30. Mm -hmm. And people go around some candy. But I grew up Joe's Witness. So when Halloween struck, Boom, our porch light went off. Interesting. And then, and then when Easter came around, it was like, we didn't celebrate, we didn't talk about it. The only thing we ever talked about uh, when I grew up uh, in the household was, we're going to celebrate uh, two things. Your, uh, what is anniversary? Lost train of thought, lost it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus' death, approximately when that's supposed to be, right? So mm -hmm. I can only go based upon one, if someone gave me some candy from Halloween, we usually, because you usually go shopping, right? So you see the stores, what they have. Yep. So I know the peeps, I know the cat bears, I saw commercials on TV, and but I never got to participate in this stuff. Just never did it. It was just, even we went to school as a child, you know, be Halloween day, everybody's dressed up, you just dressed up regularly, you know. Interesting. Easter Interesting. comes, you just, you know, we had a thing called, not we, they had a thing called, um, Morio, so you just went there and, and it could be a Wednesday, it could be a Thursday, you went there for our hour. Uh, what we did do the memorial, which is different, and I don't know about now, but then was it so? The idea was you had approximately 144,000. So the concept is once the world dies, there'll be 144,000 people that were sent to heaven. Okay, 
So of the 144,000, if you had one in your congregation, they could partake in the wine or partake in the um, bread, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens, you have rows lined up, right? So you just pass it, pass it along the rows. And in your congregation, references a church, if you had one or two people that part of 144,000, they can partake in the wine, right? Or the bread. So that's obviously something totally different than what I experienced as a kid is that just like, you know, you get the wine, pass it, get the bread, pass it. Then, you know, you're looking around like, okay, who, who's going to partake in this? Because we had one person, uh, we called it sister at the time, which is an older person. She's about 144,000. She could only drink the wine and the bread. Everybody just touched it. That was it. Huh, interesting. Okay. Interesting, right? So that, that is extremely interesting. Um, and me being, uh, uh, you know, raised Catholic, it was all about the Lent and Ash Wednesday and, you know, what are you going to give up for Lent and what do you get? And then there was Palm Sunday and oh, we're almost to Easter and life is great. And I remember um, back a few years ago, this is when I was working in the catering company. And remember when we were between two popes because Benedict had resigned and the new pope hadn't, okay, hadn't been appointed yet. Um, well, it was Ash Wednesday and I was in a customer's office and here I was, I'm doing my thing and I'm selling the salad, yeah. selling the brownies. So I'm saying, oh, I want a margarita chicken salad. Oh, and I want a bread. She's like, wait, I'm Catholic. And it's Ash Wednesday. And I'm and I'm not supposed to have meat today. And I'm supposed to give up sweets for Lent. That's what I decided. And I remember I looked her dead in the eye and I said, honey, nobody's keeping count right now because we are between popes. The office is closed. There's no backdating. What do you need to get through this day? She bought two salads and two brownies at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's a Catholic free for all. What do you do? What do you do? So, yeah. and that was my, that's my Ash Wednesday story. But, um, and see, God has not struck me down for that. So I, I, I'm on the, I'm in the good book for that one. Um, but when it comes to, to, for me doing Lent now, um, I don't give anything up because my attitude is if I'm giving something up, then it's something that it's something that I should obviously change in what I'm doing in my life anyway. Right. Like a behavior. Is that correct? Like a behavior. So some people are like, I'm going to give up chocolate. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to eat meat. I'm not going to do whatever. Why not take it a step further and say, if I really need to give something up, then it should be something that makes me better as a person. Therefore I shouldn't have to go back to it at all. And so that's how I kind of look at it. And I don't necessarily say it's it's Ash Wednesday. It's the start of Lent. I I kind of do that all year round. Does that make sense? That's a totally different perspective. Um, it's funny. Like um, you think about losing weight. Everybody waits to the first of the year. I'm gonna drop twenty pounds, or I'm gonna wait to uh, my birthday. I'm gonna get ready for that summer body. Or oh man, this time change. I gotta get ready for summer. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, any behavior you want to change, you should have been already practicing in it long ago it's something you should have gave up so it's funny how people that would think of lent um i'm gonna give it one thing well it's probably something you should be doing anyways if you want to give it alcohol you want to give it sugar maybe eating too much sugar you should be thinking about giving it up so why why do we want to wait to a special occasion to make a change in our life well that's well that's very true but if you think about it ash wednesday the first day of lent valentine's day um you know, St. Patrick's Day, once St. Patrick's Day comes, I'll, I'll quit drinking for a month or the first of the year or my birthday or whatever. Everybody need some people need a thing, an event, a marker to latch onto. And other people don't, which is why other people can say, you know what, today's my day and that's okay. So it all depends on how you are as a person whether you need assistance and help, whether you need coaching, support, whatever it is, you know, this is this is how you work. And this is this is getting in touch with your authentic self, if that makes sense. You know what it makes sense. Hmm. But back to my authentic self, if I have my way with the candy, don't stand in the way between me and a Nestle hundred thousand dollar bar. I think they're called <laughs> brands now. Okay, hold on. They're called Nestle Thousand Dollar Bar. What are they called now? What's the new name? Now it's called the Hundred Grand, and it used to be called the Hundred Thousand Dollar Bar. And it was actually 
the bar was extra long because they had to put Nestle hundred thousand dollar bar and spell it all out. Now they've shortened it to a hundred grand. It's literally one zero zero G R A N D. Oh, the bars are shorter and they're the best. They're just oh my god, I love it. But you cannot. It's very difficult to find. You can get the bag of Snickers. You can get the bag of Reese's, which is my next favorite candy, in in pieces and cups and miniatures and whatever and jumbo and sticks and blah. It's very difficult to find the hundred thousand dollar bars. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about what Ling looked like as a kid. I mean, what I like as I was like something with crunch into it. So, mm -hmm. there was the crunch bar, the blue one. Uh huh. Then it came out with uh, Hershey's came out with their own like cookies and cream version of candy. That was my favorite. I love cookies and cream. Mm -hmm. My favorite bar though was a payday bar, right? caramel and nuts. Remember yep. back in back in the early '90s, where they're trying to sell more candy, and it went from like the small regular size to now the king size bar. Like I you know. Cut up in chunks. Remember that? Yeah. Oh my God, that was like you go to the store get this humongous payday bar, and what you do is you just kind of break it down and just have bite sized chunks. Mm -hmm. I don't think they sell king size nowadays. I mean, if you go to the candy aisle now, especially grocery stores, especially not grocery stores, but like the gas station, that's what I went to as a kid, they shrunk. They had less selection than I ever had before. But see, it but see, it depends on which store you go to because everybody has limited shelf space. So right. you buy the the smaller size, and you have so much shelf space now. Instead of getting all king size and having four different varieties, you get the smaller size. You have nine different varieties. Um, they do sell king size paydays, but now the king size payday, just like the the king size of the Mars and the Snickers, actually have two right. small ones inside of it. So it's really easy just to pull out one and then put the rest away for later, unless you're like me. And once I open it, that's it. It's all going down my throat. It's gone doesn't happen often but when i do hook into it even my son steps back and says what's going on mom You're <laughs> okay I, the know, I, I don't have a sweet tooth um if you put a candy bar and a can of pringles next to each other step away from the pringles because your hand will go down my throat with the pringles yeah. <laughs> but when i do have to go onto the dark side onto the sugar side step back because man something's going on yeah so okay okay hold on let's switch the gears a little bit okay Let's talk about your worst candy. My worst candy I never liked was Almond Joy because they always had the big bar and one small little almond. So I'm trying to get each bite with the almond, one small little almond. But see, I, I like did see, not like Almond Joy. Okay. I uh, see when I was growing up, there were two bars with two almonds on each. So nope. you had to do chunk one, chunk two, chunk three, chunk four. There may be one almond now. I just eat the almond first and then I just pop the rest in my mouth. That's, that's right. the way I eat it. Um, that was my worst, least favorite bar. Yeah, the worst candy I find are um, malted milk balls used to taste a lot better than they do now. Oh, I remember that candy. Yeah, the Whoppers. They used to be yes. great. Yes. And now they, it's just, it's like they changed the formula or something because it's just like dry powder. I feel like I'm eating drywall. Like powdered sugar. That's pretty much what it is. No taste, it's, no texture. It's okay. It's like Cremora, powdered Cremora, uh -huh. you know, that you put in your coffee or tea versus half and half versus sweet and low versus. It's like that. Uh. No more malted milk balls for me. Wow. Okay. Now, now I'm thinking about what else has changed. So, you know, McDonald's in the nineties, McDonald's had a nice thick kind of apple pie. Remember that yeah. cream with filling inside of it. We buy into it. It's a whole, whole, Oh my God. It's hot, hot potato. Yep. Now it's like flat is pre-made. It's all that powdered sugar on it. That was the best apple pie ever. But when it changed the formula to something new, it looked like crap. I hated it. Well, it's a good thing that that's not on the candy list then. So yes, but I'm so, still about so, the worst thing I had. Yes, and and let's just let's just get off the fast food topic because we can go totally <laughs> different route there. But back to the candy, Peeps are still um, a fan fave, and now they have. Uh, let me tell you about the flavors. They have party cake flavors. They have jalapeno flavor. They have hot cinnamon flavor. Um, sour apple flavor. I mean, it used to be just yellow and pink. Just give me the yellow, give yeah. me the pink, that's it. Easy peasy. Um, but the red licorice is not what it used to be either. The red licorice doesn't taste as good as it used to. Oh, no, not at all. It's all just like powder. It's all like powdered sugar now. They don't like, 
they, they want to make it all too sweet instead of just keep the formula the way it was, or it's not as chewy. It's really hard, and I was like, I got to break it away on your teeth, right? Yeah, you got to break it away. But there's there's the Twizzler is now super soft, but it just doesn't it it, it doesn't taste berry ish. It just tastes chemically, whereas mm -hmm. the red vines are too hard. They don't have any flavor either. Not, none of it has any flavor to me. So that's like, I love berries. I just love berries. Bring it on. But do you remember Jolly Ranchers? They used to have the big sticks when we were kids. Yes. And they had the fire stick, which was like the super hot cinnamon one. And they had watermelon. Yep. Well, now, and then, and then they shortened it for Halloween that you could get them like this big for Halloween, which is perfect. Now, the oh. little ones. You can't even find the mini bars anymore, let alone the big ones. Those were the best. Oh, man. I wonder why nowadays, the things that were great, right? These, these are classics that were great. Mm -hmm. Why the change of formula? Well, you know what? My sister in New York used to be head of worldwide operations for the Mars Candy Corporation. And next time I talk to her, I'm going to ask her because she worked in the factory in China and I never got a chance to go visit. She said, but it was really cool because on production day when they'd be doing the Three Musketeers and right. you'd have the nougat come down and then, and then the caramel would be put on. Then the chocolate, she, had, she said she could go to any spot in the assembly line and be like, oh, that one doesn't look good. Fling and just pick up the piece of nougat and eat it. Yeah. And I'm like, seriously. And she told me all about how M&Ms were made and the flinging through the machine and then the, the extra, yeah. oh, super badass cool. But I will ask her about that because well, I don't know the answer to that. She might, if she decides I, she can tell me without killing me. That's think about M and M's. I forgot all about M and M's. They used to have two kinds. You had chocolate, then you came chocolate with nuts. You had the brown or black package, then you had the yellow package. Right. Nowadays, that stuff comes in so many different flavors. Yes. My favorite were the um, M and M's, but I hate it with nuts. So I hate the fact you get the package. And then like 50% of it's nothing but air. Right. Fill it to the, to fill, it to the fill it to the top, buddy. I, I want to enjoy it, right? And you're not, you know, one, two, three, oh, I've got 10. Because all it's all air. I'll tell you why that is. I actually know the answer to that question. Okay, what's the answer? Okay, because in my time working, doing advertising for Nestle and for Unilever, where they had candy, is that first of all, everything's done by weight. And when you have things in a pouch where you have to do pressurized, um, you know, the ch 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 seal as opposed to the wrapping of the candy bar seal, you have to leave a lot of air in there because um, most factories are at sea level. And when you take something to higher altitudes, either for shipping, well, for shipping or on airplanes, when you do it, the um, bag actually expands when you get into oh, wow. altitude. So you have to accommodate for that. And um, you would know it if you bought a bag of chips uh, down here in Walnut Creek and you drive up to Tahoe and you're in there for two and you're there for too long, the bag will explode in your car. Interesting. I never, I never thought about it scientifically. It's too much of a difference. And the same thing can happen with um, the bags of candy. So the scientists have come, they, they want packaged stuff. And the only way to do it is if you had to fill up for me. Because obviously, at one point, it probably was exploding. People were like, what the hell is going on? The ships are exploding. Right. Because there and, was, and you have to, it has to equalize. Just like you equalize your air, the bag has to be able to equalize. Wow. I learned something new today. I never thought about I thought it was, it's being cheap. It, it, it's, they're trying to sell me less. But not yeah. think about equal volume and weight. Yep. And there's uh, that's also why the, why the, why the packaging is paper with like that kind of sheen on top because it has to be able to breathe whereas the oh. plastic doesn't breathe as much and why you have well, now you have those big pouches like right. the yellow pouch or the brown pouch or whatever like how can i explain this with my notes here's your pouch and it's filled like to here because right. the plastic doesn't it doesn't uh breathe as much so it has to be able to it has more room inside Wow, look at this, you're a scientist now. No, well, I did a lot of advertising for Nestle and for Unilever, and I was in charge of uh, all of confectionery and pet care when I did Nestle in Australia. And then when I worked on Unilever, I did all the shampoo and Dove and body washes and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, we digress. 
because we're back to favorite candies and it's Easter time. And if you got, if I sent you a chocolate bunny, how would you eat that chocolate bunny? What part of the bunny would you eat first? I'm going for the ears. Easiest part to put my mouth around. Yep. Funny enough, yeah. that is the most that is the most common thing. People go for the ears first. Wow, interesting. I never knew that. I'm learning so much new stuff now. The ears, how to ship product. So, mm -hmm. how, so most people, because I mean, I'm thinking about a kiddo, right? Of a kid, he's gonna see the two ears sticking out and go, "How? Yeah, that's it." Yep. Now, if a small can put my mouth like a small size, I was popping my mouth whole. Yep, absolutely. I eat the face first. Why the face? Uh, well, you know, see, Coco does the same. Coco, my dog, does the same thing. I would bite the nose off first because that had the little sugar candy part, right. and then pop off the eyes. So maybe I didn't want it to smell me coming or see me coming or whatever, or see the ending death that was about to happen. To it. And then <laughs> invariably, don't ask me, the face would collapse. So I eat the face first. Nice. And then because I mean, because like with the nose is be some kind of candy, they're hard candy, right? Usually, yeah, the nose would be a hard candy, the eyes would be a hard candy, and I try to get those off first without breaking the face. Of course, the face collapsed, so then I'd literally have a boat and I'd eat that, and then I'd kind of just take the body and then I'd eat it like a hoagie after that. <laughs> you, have a, you, have a whole, you have a whole strategy, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, oh exactly. Yes. I, I want our audiences out there that'll be listening to our podcast. What's their favorite candy? Because I, I think it has something to do with taste buds. Sometimes yep. how your family ate, like your mom or your dad, how they like candy is usually how you end up liking candy because you're exposed to that kind of variety of candy and it does change over time. But you know, because I tried candy, let's say from different cultures, and sometimes it's too sweet. I don't like anything with milk in it. So my dad loved mm -hmm. the payday. My dad loved crunch. Anything with crunch, ice cream, mm -hmm. uh, payday bars, Snickers bars, he killed it. So that's probably why now when I get into candy, especially cookies, it got to have some kind of crunch. Be it layer on top is crunchy, or bottom layer is crunchy, or as a nuts inside, it has to have a crunch. I wonder how many people out there, because now with nut allergies, so when I was a kid, the idea of nut allergies didn't really exist. They like, you know, maybe one kid had nut allergies, but now, if you notice, even the candy aisles and cookie aisles have changed. We have things with less nuts and more things are either vegan style or organic or don't have any nuts at all. So it's hard to find any cookies with nuts in them. Yeah, it is a lot harder. And um, and my son is one of the you know many kids now who has nut allergies, and he's allergic to all of them. Oh, um, man. Oh, I know. See, I was a caterer. I was a chef let's not get started there on my opinion of um things in that area we're just going to leave that one for another time okay. um but yeah in fact he doesn't even want me to have uh nuts in the house i mean he, he's 18 he he knows not to eat them but he's like oh my god mom if you eat that handful of nuts and you can't kiss me and i'm like Ooh, okay or or okay. or darn i you know really yeah. so anyway we go back and forth but um where was my train of thought? My train kind of left the station without me being on board there for a second. It's, it's fading. Bye bye. Bye, <laughs> Denise. You need to go like deal with stuff. But yeah, that's okay. I, I guess you, you're you're trying to talk about we're talking about nut allergies and how everything now has you got two different things. You got vegan. You got with nuts, but you can't find anything with nuts that much anymore. It's either plain or it's organic stock because of food allergies. That's very true. And you know what? I have not tried any of the gluten-free candy yet or any of the vegan candy, but for me, that's kind of like, do you have the whipped cream or do you have Cool Whip? If you're going to eat the candy, just say give me, it. Just give, give me all. I, I don't need to have this vegan organic. My thing is, if I'm going to eat the candy bar or cookie, I'm going to be counting the calories. I'm not going to be counting the, the sugar. I'm going to eat the darn cookie and I'm going to feel good about it. Yeah, I'm going we'll, to We'll talk later. I, and then, and then I shall repent later. <laughs> or I will do those extra ten sit-ups and say that Oreo cookie's mine, baby. Yeah, that, that's what I exactly what I do. So I want to say this for those that are watching this podcast: you should write down and do experiment at what is your favorite candy and why. Like, is it because your parents like this candy, or is it because it reminds you of it being a kid? Because mine at the payday bar reminds me of being a kid. Um, and figure out, do an experiment. What's your favorite candy? What holiday? You can do it with friends. 
what yeah. how, how they like better Easter, Halloween, and which fairy candy? Write it all down, right? And compare notes. That'd be awesome. But even That's better, cool. let us know. Reach out to yes. us. Um, yes, please. www.grandslamcoaching.com. And Ron, you are at RJ. www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com. Ron yeah, ronjohnsoncoaching.com. Here, reach out to us. Tell us what your favorite Easter candy is. Mine is um, the big Reese's football size egg, chocolate egg. Oh. The peanut butter with the peanut butter inside looks like football. Uh -huh. Man, just give Ooh, me a fucking knife. Give me a spoon. Stand back. I'm doing and it. You're killing it. Yep. And for Halloween, it's a hundred thousand dollar bar. So oh nice. Keep it going. So I want to say this. Thanks everybody for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. You know, we want to get away from something about money, about mindsets, about the coronavirus, and let's just talk about the cool stuff to life, right? There's a lot of cool stuff out there. So thanks for listening again. As always, my name is Ronald Johnson. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. See, so looking to co-create your life. Go to www.ronjohnsoncoaching.com and click on that discovery call button and let's talk. And I'm Denise Lewis. I'm at www.grandslamcoaching.com. And we'd both love to hear from you, whether it's performance-based coaching that you need or lifestyle change coaching. But meanwhile, we want to hear about your favorite chocolate and why. So please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. And this is the end of episode nine of He Said, yes. She Said. He yes. Said. Yay. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And Denise, thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Ron. I'll see you next week.